Hi there. Welcome back to A Slice of Physics. We're going to take another static equilibrium example, and in this one we're going to give you some ideas of weight loss techniques. If you want to lose weight without changing any of your habits, all you got to do is stand on a tilted scale. So we're going to see what a bathroom scale would read on a horizontal floor and on a tilted floor. Here's the question that's going to help us learn about weight loss tricks. It says Jacob weighs 900 newtons. It tells us that this is the weight by the word that precedes it, and the unit is also consistent. Remember, weight is just a force. Newton is a unit of force, so all that is good. So this is not the mass, it's the weight. Then it states that he stands on his accurate bathroom scale on a horizontal floor. That's not stated here, but that's what we usually do, so we assume that. What is the normal force from the bathroom scale on him? And then it asks, what does the scale read? Then it changes the situation where it says, now Jacob takes the scale to a floor that's tilted by 15 degrees with respect to the horizontal. When he stands on the scale now, what is the normal force from the scale on him? And what does the scale read? There are really two questions here. Let's take the first question of a horizontal floor. Then we will look at the tilted floor example. So as usual, I've listed our solution steps over here. So let's get started with the first step. I've got to draw a picture. So here's my bathroom scale on the floor. And here's Jacob standing on it. Pretty simple picture. Our object of interest is Jacob. So to draw a free body diagram, I'm going to draw it for Jacob over here and the forces acting on him. As I go around him, there's contact with the scale over here, and that would have a normal force acting in the upward direction, because normal force is perpendicular to the surface and supportive, and there is no other contact force. The long range force of weight is still relevant in this case, and I've got that acting down. So the next step was to choose a coordinate axis and so let's choose x over here and y over here. The traditional ones work well. And this time we're lucky. Both forces are well behaved. They're both along positive or negative y-axis. So we really don't have anything to do for step four. We can move on to step five. Nothing is happening along the x-axis. So all we have is the y-axis over here for which the sum of forces along y-axis is zero. Since this is a static equilibrium case, Acceleration is zero along both x and y axes, so m mass times acceleration along y axis will also be zero. So expanding that, the forces I have along y axis are normal force with a plus sign because it's a positive force acting upward, minus w, minus because weight is acting in the downward direction, so that equals zero. We know the weight. Let me actually go back and capture that information on the picture here. Weight is 900 Newton. So I get N minus 900 equals zero, and that gives me N is 900 Newton. So we've answered the first question. Now in terms of what the bathroom scale reads, scales always read the force that's applied on them. And we know from Newton's third law that the force that Jacob applies on the scale is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction to the force that the scale applies on Jacob. We know the force that the scale applies on Jacob. That is the normal force that we just figured out. And so the force that Jacob applies on the scale, the magnitude of it will again be just 900 Newton. And so that's what the scale would read. Except scales are not set up in SI units. Typically, they're set up in pounds. Pound and Newton are simply units of force, and there's a conversion factor between them. And that conversion factor is one pound equals 4.45 Newton. So the normal force in units of pound is simply 900 Newtons times, I want Newtons in the bottom, pounds in the top. I've got one pound equals 4.45 Newtons. And that gives me a weight of 202 pounds. So, so far you, may, you might have been wondering why Jacob is a giant weighing 900 Newton, because we're not used to seeing that big a number, but that's because we were working with the SI units. When you convert it to pound, his weight is 202 pounds, 
and that's quite reasonable. Okay, so no surprise here, the scales do read the weight and that's what we get. Now let's see what happens when we put it on a tilted floor. So now I've got the picture over here. I got a horizontal here, but the floor is not horizontal. It's tilted at an angle of 15 degrees with respect to the horizontal. The scale is placed over here and Jacob is standing on this scale. His weight is still 900 Newton. Nothing changed. It's still the same old Jacob. The question is, what does the scale read? So the free body diagram now looks like this. I've got the weight acting straight down. It always does. And that's 900 Newton. As I go around Jacob, the only force is the contact force from the floor. So that acts perpendicular to this floor that's tilted at 15 degrees. So that normal force is going to be something like this. And there is one more force in this case. If it was a perfectly smooth floor, Jacob would not be able to stand on it. The scale would not be able to stand on the floor. They would both slide down. And in order to prevent that, since we are in static equilibrium, there's got to be a frictional force that acts in this direction to resist that motion. So let's show that also. So we got the free body diagram capturing all the forces on the object. We're trying to figure out what the normal force is. The axis now is going to be tilted. For most ramp problems, in fact almost all ramp problems that we'll encounter in this course, the tilted axis works best. That's because, as we discussed before, it turns the motion, if there is one, into a one-dimensional motion. That makes it easy to analyze. And the other advantage in cases like this where there is no motion is that you can see that two of the forces by this choice of axis would be well behaved. They are along the axes and I only need to break the weight down into its components along the x-axis and y-axis. If I chose my normal coordinate system and solve through it correctly, there's nothing wrong. I will get the same answer if I work through this choice correctly. It's, my work is just going to be a little bit harder in this case because of equilibrium and a lot harder in the case of a situation with acceleration, which would be dynamics, because I would have acceleration along both the axes and in this case, I would have to break normal and frictional force along their X and Y components. So even though there is nothing wrong, we're not going to do this. We're going to take the simple way out by choosing a tilted axis. So I'm going to draw these forces again over here larger so we can work with them a little bit. So I got weight acting straight down, 15 degree floor over here, frictional force acting in this direction, normal force acting perpendicular to the floor in this direction. And I've got my X and Y axes like this. Okay, now I've got the normal forces well behaved. It's along positive Y axis, frictional forces along positive X axis. The weight needs to be broken down into its components. And here would be the components of weight along the Y axis and along the X axis. I would go from the tip to the axes in a perpendicular way to determine how far these arrows would go. So I have WX over here, WY over here. Now I don't need to consider W anymore. I got four forces. X component of weight, Y component of weight, normal force, and frictional force. And since I have static equilibrium, along X axis, sum of forces has to be zero, which gives me minus WX because WX is to the left, so along negative X axis plus F because that's along positive x-axis equals zero. Since I'm interested in figuring out the normal force, I'm going to let this sit for now, not worry too much about it, and move on to the y-axis. Sum of forces in the y-axis is also zero since I'm an equilibrium case, and that gives me plus N minus WY equals zero. No acceleration in the y direction either. Okay, now we got to do a little bit of geometry. We knew that this angle here was 15, but which of these angles is 15? Well, it looks like this must be 15 because it's a smaller angle, but let's convince ourselves that that is the case. So here's a horizontal reference line, and that will be perpendicular to the weight because weight's always vertical. And this angle here was given to us as 15. I'm not going to write the number there, but I'll just draw two angle lines in this color. And when you see that, you know we're talking about a 15 degree angle. So if that's 15, and this is 90 over here, what does that make this angle? Since the sum of the three sides of a triangle add up to 180, this angle is 90 by itself. 
if that's 15, this is going to be 90 minus 15. And here I've got a right angle. These two are perpendicular, Wx and Wy, x and y components. x and y axes are always perpendicular. So I got 90 minus 15, 75 degrees here, and that leaves me with the remaining 15 degrees back over here. And so we've convinced ourselves that this is a 15 degree angle. So back to our equation, n minus wy. wy is the adjacent to this angle. Hypotenuse is the w. So cosine of 15 would be adjacent divided by hypotenuse. And when you solve that for wy, you would get wy is simply w times cosine of 15 degrees. And that equals 0. And this gives me n minus 900 newton times cosine of 15 degrees equals 0 which you can solve for n as 846 Newton. So I've answered the question of what is the normal force. Now, what is the force that the scale would read? Once again, the scale would read the force that Jacob applies on the scale. And by Newton's third law, that is equal in magnitude to the force the scale applies back on Jacob, which is nothing but the normal force. So the scales reading would be the equivalent of 846 Newton, but we would have to go to pounds. So let's do that. Same conversion factor as before, and that gives me 190 pounds. So even though Jacob's actual weight is 202 pounds, the scale is now going to read 190 pounds because we are on a tilted floor and scales don't read the weight, even though we think they do. They always read the normal force. So that's what I meant by a weight loss trick. In this slice of physics, we worked with another equilibrium example, which gave us some practice on determining normal force on horizontal floors and on tilted floors. And in doing so, we recognized that scales don't always read the weight, but they do always read the normal force, which can be determined using free body diagrams and Newton's laws. Thanks for watching.